welcome back to Art Classes with Prosper. In our previous lesson, we were able to understand what literature is, some types of literature, and the genres of literature. And in today's lesson, we shall be talking about the oral literature. Is there really anything like oral literature? Remember that we said etymologically, literature means any written material. Then what does the word of mouth has to do with the art of writing? In this class, I shall be exposing you into that knowledge. But if this is your first time of visiting this channel, please subscribe, like this video, and turn on the notification box. All right, let us get started. Oral literature is that form of literature, that kind of literature, that is passed from one generation to another using the word of mouth. It is not written. It is that form of literature that was composed by fathers and mothers in the time of old and is transferred from one generation to another, even to this generation, using the word of mouth. It is not documented like the work of Shakespeare. It can also be said it is the literature of the Africans. Many Europeans believe Africans do not have literature because it is not documented. But when we talk about normal written literature, we can divide it into drama, prose, and poetry. That is the same way the oral literature can be divided into drama, prose, and poetry. Remember, poetry deals with songs. So all these ones are the poetry we have in oral literature. Burial songs, marriage songs, naming ceremony songs, festival songs that were composed in the time of old and still transferred from one generation to another using the word of mouth. They were not even documented. And when it comes to the prose of oral literature, we are talking about folk tales. Folk tales are traditional stories, majorly used um, to teach moral lessons. Most times, animals feature as the characters. Once upon a time, there was a land where a tortoise lived. The tortoise was the wisest man in the kingdom. The lion was the king. There was a man who normally does this and does that. All these ones are folk tales. Majorly used to teach moral lessons. And they are not also documented, but transferred from one generation to another using the word of mouth. We also have legends. Legends are those stories that talks about ancient heroes and their great deeds. Ancient heroes and their great deeds. For example, people have lived, they are already dead, but the great things they did can never be forgotten. So those kind of stories are what we call legends. They also have myth. Myths are used to explain natural phenomena. Used to explain people's belief. This is how the world was formed. And these prose, prosaic um, works of literature in the oral literature can also be explicated if we make use of the literary terms like bringing out themes, symbolism, and even the oral literature using um, different figures of speech and also the poetic techniques in trying to explicate it. So if we can explicate these works, why do you say we don't have oral literature? Okay, talking about the drama. Remember, drama deals with imitation of life. We imitate people, how they do. So if we imitate in drama, oral literature also has it. Coming to the festivals, this is how the fathers have been doing it. This is how our mothers have been doing it. Let us imitate them. Let us try and do what they have been doing to see if we can do something of our own. Let's take, for example, the festival, for example, New Year Festival. 
the way it has been celebrated, that is how it is still being celebrated now. Because imitation is what is bringing it out. When it comes to um, naming ceremony as well, this is how it has been. They are also imitating them to do whatever thing they are doing. It's part of the oral literature. When it comes to anything at all that deals with imitation, that is not documented, it is what we mean by what? The drama in, when it comes to oral literature. So oral literature exists, even though it is not written. That is why we cannot limit ourselves to the etymological meaning of literature, which deals with the, any written material or printed material. So we will say it is the artistic way of creating things out of nothing. We don't want to talk about the legends. The legend is, is, is true life story, which is what? Non-fiction. When it comes to folktale, folktale is, is also a fictional work. So, it, we, it, 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 it's cut across every form of written literature. So, it does just depend on what is written alone, but what can be communicated that is not also documented. That is why the Africans have always agitated that they have what? Oral literature. Before the Europeans brought in the written literature. So I hope it is well understood. I said we have the oral literature, which is the literature communicated with the word of mouth. From there, we also said we have the, the three genes of oral literature, which is drama, prose, and poetry. I said the poetry of the oral literature is that literature that is what? Song. Maybe songs of the burial songs, the marriage songs, naming ceremony songs, any kind of song, or even festival songs, as far as it is sung. And he inherited from the fathers as well. We also have the drama in literature, which is at the festivals celebrated, and different kind of dance steps. Different kind of dance steps. This is that is why you check very well. The dance step of the Igbo people is different from the dance step of the Yoruba people. Because they imitate their fathers the way they dance. So it is also part of the what? The drama in oral literature. When it comes to the prose of oral literature, we have the legend, we have the myth, we have the folktale, and others. Which form part of the what? The oral literature. So having known this, work some of this out to see if you will be able to to bring out whatever thing you must have learned today. So work this out and drop your answers in the comment box. Bye.